So I get lots and lots of questions about designing across a mid-plane and because of new technology, tools, so on and so forth. I'm going to show you another method. I've talked about this other times, but um, I'm going to show you another method that now I really like to use. I think this is one of my preferential methods about designing across uh, a plane, the center plane, symmetry plane. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna true up my view, okay? And I'm gonna lock this in. And then uh, on my space mouse, there's a little button that allows me to lock in that. So I'm no longer able to rotate it, break rotation. I do not wanna break rotation. I want this view for now. So I'm gonna design just this upper in this area here. And me, I'm a big fan of splines huge fan of splines. I use them everywhere. So with that, I'm going to come in and start out with, and I typically start out with just three control points. I know some people get upset with me. How dare you? Uh, I'm going to go to view. And, um, and what I want to do is I want to match this shoulder. So people say in order for it to be a class A surface, you need a minimum of uh, three or three control or four control points you know three degree so on and so forth and my argument is the best looking cars ever made were made with french curves conics and so in this view i'm just going to match up plus it's much easier i don't get any inflections with something like this okay it's just me you don't have to do it do what you want now once i get this close enough I'm going to hit OK to create it. Now we can see it through the part. Okay, there's my curve. But once I select OK, I can no longer see it through the part. It is now uh, basically behind my uh, convergent body, my STL. So I'm going to go into display and I want to go over to more and show through. I want to see the, that curve through it. Big fan of this. And um, I also like to change the color of things. Like I have a specific uh, format for my colors and fonts and sizes and thicknesses and stuff like that. So that's basically what I like to do. Okay, so it's very easy for me to know what that curve is. Now that I have the initial curve in place, I'm going to go rotate to the front by clicking uh, here my plane. I'm going to double click on my curve. And the next thing I want to do is I want to move this in a vector. I know I want to move it in a vector. I want only to go in the x direction. You can see here's my x in the x direction. Because I already have it very close in the other directions in, in the side view. So this allows me now to basically say that I want to move this this way. And as I drag these, I can only go in that direction. And I'm going to, again, get this close, like in this view, to that shoulder. It doesn't have to be perfect, because you know what? There's this little thing, funny thing called parameters, and history, and parametric modeling that does wonders. OK, so I'm going to unlock that on my space mouse. So I have a curve kind of close. You can see it kind of bleeds in and out. And this is one of the reasons why I really like the way this shades a lot is as I'm looking at that curve, I can see that it sits below the STL, like behind it. This is in front of the STL. So I know it's kind of waffling a little bit back and forth, which is fine. But because of the way that I built it, let me do my curve analysis on this little beauty. We know, we reduce the needle count because that's a lot of needles. We know that's going to be a good looking curve. It's a very simple curve. That's going to make a very nice looking surface. Okay. Cancel that. Now the next thing I do is I'm going to go in and mirror this curve. I'm going to mirror you. This is my mid plane and select OK. 
Now, I'm going to reiterate this. I've talked about this in other videos. I do not like building to the center. I seldom do it. Once in a while, it has to be done. And there are ways to do that and have the surface come through and get the spot that you need it to get right, right around that curve. There are lots of ways to do that. Um, and there's, you know, for some people, that's their preference. I just find that a lot of times, if you're not very, very careful going across that center with your modeling technique, it's not perfect. And this is a class A surface. We want it to be perfect. So now that I have my curve, symmetrical curve, I'm going to build a surface. And I'm just going to simply build it through curves. And no position, no nothing. It's just simply, I'm going to preserve shape by parameter. And curve number one, curve number two, there is my surface. Now, because this is a symmetry of this, when I look at the control polygon on this thing, one of my poles, see how clean that is? All right, those poles are perfect. Now, I have to modify this surface to puff it up in the center. And this is where X-Form comes in handy. And I have to admit, I love X-Form. Absolutely love it. Have I told you how much I love it? So I'm going to select my surface, and I want to edit this symmetrically. Okay, what's my symmetry plane? Well, let me pick this guy. So now that I have my symmetry plane selected, the only row that I am going to concern myself with moving is this one. That's it. Now, the reason why all I have to worry about is this row is because this side is going to move symmetrically. Now, I don't want to move this row. This row is anchored in to this curve. Because it's anchored in to that curve, well, the curve drives that shape. So the only row of control polygons, my poles that I'm going to move, are this one. All right, let me turn off micro position. Let me go to vector, this direction, grab this, and whoops. Grab this guy, oops, I deselected, and pull that up. Okay, now you can see, and this is one of the reasons why I love this, is as I pull it up, this area starts disappearing behind the surface, and this area has not disappeared yet. So I'm going to go in, and rather than moving an entire control polygon, I'm just going to move one of the control points, bring that back down a little bit. Bring this up a little bit. Bring this up a little bit. And what I'm looking for is a nice even gradation of how that stuff, that surface appears or disappears, right? I want a nice, because the scan isn't terrible, it's pretty good. And again, I'm using the scan as a reference. You know, if it's a quarter of a mil off, is it a full millimeter off? You know, some people get really caught up in how much deviation to the scan are they allowed and so on and so forth. Generally speaking, the scan is just giving you background to work off of. You don't have to sweat it too much because eventually somebody that's got the industrial design background, that's got the, the stylist, that's got the eye, they know what they're looking for is going to come and tell you and say, hey, can you hold it closer over here? Maybe deviate a little bit over here because it's not giving me the highlights that I want. Again, the scan is a suggestion. It's giving you the basic initial shape to work to. And you as the modeler have got to know that I want a nice, big, gentle, sweepy shape that gives me a very nice highlight across the surface. So that's why we start out with these very simple shapes. Now... As I go through the process and I say, all right, well, this is pretty close. I'm kind of there. One of the things that I notice is, okay, well, I'm not getting, because the curve sits underneath the mesh, 
I'm not quite getting the result that I want, so I'm going to select OK. I'm going to right mouse click on this curve and I'm going to go Edit Parameters. Edit Parameters allows me to now modify this. So I'm going to go Micro Position because I want to move it just very, very little. I forgot to turn on Single Segment. I always do that. I should probably have turned it on from the very beginning, but you know, I got excited. Now I'm going to grab this point. Now all I'm doing is controlling this curve. That's it. By doing that, it's going to change this side and it's going to change everything symmetrically. So I'm going to take this and I want to go vector. Actually, I can just go normal on this guy. Pull it up. And something magical begins to happen. You see the entire surface begins to update. Pull this up a little bit more. Select OK. Go to my X form. And the symmetry is it's still there. I'm still editing it symmetrically. I'll go to Normal and bring this down again. And you'll note how nice that looks. I have a very nice, gentle, graduated looking uh, deviation between the STL and the surface. Okay, so I know I'm hovering over the target, very, very close to what I want. And you may play around with it a little bit more to perfect that shape. This may take another five minutes, this may take another 20 minutes, this may take another two hours, depending on what you're working on. Okay, sometimes these shapes are very tricky to achieve. And because this is the base element, everything else is going to be built off of this. This needs to be perfect. So, you know, with that, I may go, wait a minute, I'm going to move along the uh, polygon. I want to take this guy and move it down along that polygon. See what it's doing across the center plane. Okay, go back to normal. Grab this guy. And there we go. And what I'm seeing now, let me go back to micro position. What I'm seeing now is much closer to that very gentle in and out onto the STL. Right? You see there's some showing through here, through here. You can see a little STL here, here. So it's you can see that there's a very it's like a mean fit to that top surface. And again, you know, maybe you need a little bit more back here. Okay, great. I'm gonna grab this and pull this up. And that gives me that little bit more, all right? And then, again, if I need something a bit more on this edge, right mouse click, edit parameters. By doing that edit parameters, once again, I am able to see the modifications occur as I'm making them. Go back to my X form. Uh, let me reduce my rate on my micro position. Grab this and bring that down a little bit. And I'm seeing something that I really like. Okay, bring this one up a little bit. There we go. And again, I might play around with it a little bit more. And maybe try to get it a little closer up here if necessary. I don't think it would be. You know, maybe play around with what this looks like at that front edge. Right, because the control points look, they, there may be some tension on them because of the shape. Rather than, you, you see how they're going straight up, they, you know, I may want to uh, have them uh, change the direction a little bit to see what that looks like. So let me go ahead and hide that. And I'm going to go into analysis, pick this guy, turn off my poles. I can hide those curves. And then I'm going to do my reflection. And that is going to be a very nice surface. Okay, now as I look at it, I can see, yeah, there's a little bit of tension down here that I don't necessarily like. So uh, what I like to do, show that again. Let me just go standard view, go to my X form is, all right, well, I'm going to go back into Polygon. I'm going to grab this Polygon. Let me turn off Micro. Actually, let me just increase that. Let me go down to, there we go. Let me just drag this down to make it a little bit more normal looking. 
Let me grab this, do the same thing. Grab this. Okay, maybe that surface needed that tension to begin with. Okay, maybe you don't want it. Go back to normal. Grab that. Bring that back in. And once again, I'm very, very close. Let me go slam that down a bit. Drag this down a little bit. And, oh yeah, look at that. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. Let's see something around there. And again, play around a little bit more. Let me check out my, eh, let me turn off my convergent. And, yeah, I'm seeing a little bit nicer at this end. It doesn't really dog leg as much as it gets down to the bottom. I know this part's going to get cut off. We're going to blend in back over here, but I wanted to just get it looking nicer as far as I can to the outer extents of that surface. Okay, so that's another method, absolute genius way of creating surfaces across a mid plane that gives you a lot of control. Okay, a lot of times I would build section surfaces with arcs, you know, two guides and an arc, and then play around with linear values. Is one side is bigger, another side is smaller, radius sizes, and so on and so forth. And I still do that on occasion. And uh, this is just another way to go about uh, building that surface, which I really like.